So today is World Brain Day, which is dedicated to raising awareness about multiple uh, sclerosis, which is a de uh, debilitating neurological disease that affects 2.8 million people across the world. Now, because the symptoms of MS, as it's commonly known, are not always obvious, it's not known as an uh, visible disease at least. But the good news is that early diagnosis and better access to treatment can lead to a better quality of life. Let's understand this a bit better now. Bring in Dr. Dominic Giampaolo, who's the executive member of the Neurological Association of South Africa. Doc, great to see you. Thanks very much indeed for taking time out to help us understand this particular condition. 2.8 million people across the world. I think that's a, a diagnosis that many people might be surprised by, considering how little is known about this disease. Morning, thank you very much for inviting me. Um, yeah, multiple sclerosis falls under the umbrella of autoimmune disorders, so where your immune system um, gets triggered to attack your, your own body, and in this case it uh, causes damage to the lining of the nerve fibers in your central nervous system of your brain and spinal cord, and this results in uh, various neurological deficits uh, depending which part of your brain gets attacked. Um, it used to be a, a dreaded diagnosis because 10-15 um, years ago we didn't have much to treat uh, patients and therefore um, didn't want to even give them the diagnosis. Uh, but nowadays there's over 15 medications available to treat the disease and if we get the disease early and put the patient on adequate medication we can almost guarantee them a, a normal life. So not such a dreaded diagnosis as it used to be. Sure. Um, early diagnosis, nonetheless, is the objective, but what are the signs that someone might be suffering from this kind of disease? You know, the symptoms can be very variable depending which part of the brain or spinal cord gets attacked, but basically um, optic neurosis, which is an inflammation of the optic nerve resulting in decreased vision or blurry vision in an eye that persists for several days or numb patches, different parts of the body, or problems with your bladder or weakness in a limb that persists for several days and then starts improving, instead of ignoring it, um, go to your doctor and uh, have it investigated. If you're not happy with um, your general practitioner, try to get through to a specialist or see somebody else if your neurological symptoms persist and, and you need it to be investigated. Um, the problem is that symptoms can come and go. So if symptoms are there and they persist for several days, um, even though they might improve, please go and have it investigated. Yeah. Any particular causes? Um, nobody knows the cause, as with most other autoimmune diseases. It's thought that Epstein-Barr virus, which causes glandular fever, which you know, at least 80% of the population will have been exposed to Epstein-Barr virus, but a certain percentage um, will go on to develop uh, possibly multiple sclerosis. We're not sure if that's the absolute cause. There's a lot of environmental factors that have been blamed. Smoking increases your chances quite dramatically in your teenage years. Um, lack of vitamin D, not ex um, in, especially in um, countries where there's poor exposure to sunlight um, and people are mostly indoors, have all been implicated as um, a whole lot of factors that contribute to um, the initiation of the disease. You've mentioned that there are a whole lot more treatments now than there were perhaps a couple of years ago. Speak to us about uh, specifically ivermectin, which I understand is one of the treatments being touted about. I'm not quite sure how much um, uh, legitimate, yeah, um, call it verification, has actually taken place, but I'm sure you must have heard about ivermectin. Are you able to speak to that at all about whether or not it works? Uh, so ivermectin in multiple sclerosis has no role whatsoever. Um, ivermectin in COVID... Um, is also very controversial. Um, you know, there are, there are doctors um, touting its good response, but there are no absolute um, high-grade trials showing its uh, benefit. Um, it's almost become a, how can I say it, in the community, a go-to medicine, um, not available in pharmacies. Um, so we always use trials as the most important indicator of whether medications work, um, clinical based evidence trials that go through phase one to four as the vaccines have gone through. Ivermectin hasn't gone through that, you know, it's an anti-parasite um, uh, medication used in animals and not really used in humans in many countries um, and therefore just to 
for me to say that there's a role for ivermectin in COVID, definitely not in MS, um, that would be my stance and that uh, um, we always wait for trials. One almost gets a sense though that it's somewhat ubiquitous uh, in communities where people, I guess, are dealing with patients of MS. Why do you think that is? I mean, how did it even get to a point where it's being touted as, as commonly as it is, which is certainly the impression I'm getting? Um, I certainly haven't seen amongst my patients. Um, I write the guidelines for the country, so I do see, do see a lot of multiple sclerosis patients, and, and ivermectin hasn't been used in any patients. They're not touted. So I don't know where that information is coming from, but sure. really ivermectin in multiple sclerosis, um, I haven't even seen it in the clinic groups. Right. I mean, do you envision it getting to a point where it does undergo those clinical trials that you've referenced? Um, I really doubt it. Um, in terms of its mode of action, um, it can have nothing to do with the uh, pathogenesis or mechanisms in multiple sclerosis. Mm. There are obviously other treatments, though. What do those look like and what do they entail? So um, there's a whole group of, of medicines. They all work on your immune system. As your immune system is overactive, um, we want to dampen down the immune system in terms of attacking your own uh, brain and spinal cord. So there are various medications, there are probably about 15 on the market, that attack your immune system in, in, in various ways um, and to describe the whole uh, pathogenesis in terms of your immune mechanism would be difficult for this program. Um, so we got interferons, which were the first drugs that were um, made and those were natural anti-inflammatories that, that your body makes that was then um, put into a synthetic uh, mode and manufactured in uh, biological companies to be given to patients to dampen down the inflammatory response. Um, there's a lot of medications that are used for other autoimmune disorders such as rheumatoid arthritis, etc., that attack certain um, little B cells or lymphocytes that uh, have got a memory to, to attack. So if I give you a vaccination for measles, you'll have measles antibodies even in your 50s and 60s, even though you've got your vaccination as a kid because you make memory cells in your immune system that keep on making the antibodies to offer you that immunity um, over time. So if you knock those cells off, those cells that are producing antibodies to damage your brain and spinal cord uh, will also be then um, suppressed and therefore um, preserving your brain and spinal cord function. So there are various medicines that um, attack your immune system in various ways that come with certain side effects and there's an escalation of therapy where the benefits um, outweigh the side effects mm. of the medication and therefore depending on how severe your multiple sclerosis is, um, the appropriate medication is chosen by the physician. How accessible would you say the treatment generally is? Um, again, it's a matter of cost. These are very expensive medications. Mm. Um, it is one of the prescribed minimum benefit conditions laid down by government. So um, the minimum benefit has to be um, given to patients with multiple sclerosis. And I would say the minimum benefit costs in the region of probably about 8,000 rand a month uh, for, the, for the minimum benefit. So that, that's the, the cheapest medicine. So that's quite expensive, but it is a, a, a prescribed minimum benefit. Um, it is available at state hospitals. And uh, there is a more preponderance of multiple sclerosis in the Asian and white community as opposed to the black community. I'm not too sure why um, the discrepancy exists. And therefore, um, for the majority of the population, thank goodness, they don't get multiple sclerosis um, and therefore not such a burden on the state. But there is a possibility that that could be changing um, as we become more westernized. Sure. Very quickly, in about 30 seconds or so, I mean, today World Brain Day has been dedicated to this um, condition. What would you say ought to be the resounding message throughout a day like this in raising awareness about this particular disease? So I think the, the, the fundamental message is that it used to be a dreaded diagnosis and people would envisage themselves when they've got the diagnosis of ending up in a wheelchair, uh, paralyzed and with severe neurological deficits. Early diagnosis, current medication available, very treatable, and we can almost guarantee a decent life. All right, at least some optimism to end of our chat. Thanks very much indeed for speaking to us. Really do appreciate your time. Dr. Dominic Giampaolo is uh, with the Neurological Association of South Africa. In fact, is an executive member of that body.